City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin, and move the horses in to the barn, then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Welcome to another video. And if you saw my selecting a good pattern size video, don't know what I'm titling it at this point. If you saw that one, you know that this is the dress that I'm going to be making because I was using this as an example. And this should go together super fast. It looks like a very simple dress. It's just fronts, backs, an invisible zipper, facings, and that's it. So the fabric, this is made for wovens. You can see right here, it has an invisible zipper in the back. That's how you get in and out of it. And because it's made for wovens and, you know, winter, I wanted to make it out of a slightly heavier woven than the pattern calls for. It calls for chambray, linen, rayon, silkies, soft cottons, as you do. I am going to use a home deck fabric. This is one I've had around here for quite some time. It's like a straw color, but it's got a really cool woven pattern worked into it. Okay. And this is just a spur of the moment to dress make here. And this is not a color that I would normally wear this close to my face. But I'm thinking since it's such a simple design, this would be an excellent candidate for throwing on colorful scarves and things like that. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So let me go ahead and get it cut out. Okay, I'm just about to cut this out. And what I wanted to emphasize on this is because it's so simple, you really want to make sure that it is lined up on your grain line. So the uh, grain line is this, which needs to go straight up and down. So down here at the bottom, see if you can see here, and I'm using a wide fabric. I'm using a home deck fabric. This is a very wide piece, so it works better on these. I'm placing the tip of my piece just inside the selvage here, so um, it won't have any of that selvage print on it. And I'm just going to stick a little pin in there just to hold it in place. <clears throat> and at this point, I'm going to measure the tip of this little arrow. And that is to the tip of my fringes here, eight and three quarter inches. So then if I move up here to the tip of this arrow, I want to make sure that is also eight and three quarter inches. I'm going to stick a little pin right here and that way I know the entire thing is 100% on grain especially with my home deck fabric that has a woven pattern I don't want that to get wonky if you saw my um, video on selecting the size I just wanted to point out I have my top cut out in size 16 but from this underarm point the rest of the way down I have it cut out at a size 18 um, just because that's going to fit my body better. So I just wanted to point that out. That's the method I chose for this. And so I'm going to go ahead and cut out. This is the front. The back is almost exactly the same. Cut out the back also the same way. And then just a couple neck facings. So the pattern calls for a 22 inch invisible zipper. Most of my invisible zippers are 20 inch. I got my variety pack here. And because it comes with a yellow and I very rarely have the opportunity to use my yellow zippers, I'm going to do that right now. But just know that mine is going to be two inches shorter than what the pattern calls for. So I'm going to go ahead and put these away. Love my variety pack. It's a way walk thing, you know. Anyhow, 
let me go ahead and get everything started here. Now the first thing I need to tell you is the fabric that I am using, it is very, very prone to fraying. So I am going to be surging around the entire piece of both my front and back pieces. Because you can kind of see here, it, it just really wants to come apart. So I'll just put white thread back on my serger and go around both of those pieces before I get anything else done. So I know this is very abstract, but I was doing it and I said, you know what, I'm going to show you um, the way, because I always have to try to clean up my room in between projects. So this is my usual method. I have a hair dryer. And what I do is I turn on my hair dryer and blast out all the lint and stuff up here first. And out of my machine, off my table. Then I can just hang my little hair dryer up, get my vacuum, do a quick suckeroo on the floor with the vacuum, and it's all cleaned up and I'm ready to start a new project. So that's why I have a hair dryer hanging up over there if you've ever wondered. <laughs> So, the front pieces are sewed together down the center. The seam allowances are pressed open, and it's just over there. That's just, you know, matching up the fronts, sewing them together. It's done. This is the back. This is going to be the trickiest part of this whole outfit, which is just an invisible zipper. So, the first thing I need to do is mark where 5 8 7 inch is. Um, this is my neck my collar area, my neck area, from the top down. And what I do is I put a measuring tape there because that's how wide they are. And I can just put a little mark, okay? I already did that on this side. And um, what I also do is I use basting tape. This is a double-sided, water-soluble basting tape has a paper on one side, which is what this is, and then you peel the, the paper off and you can stick it on, okay? I use that instead of pins when I do zippers. So, on both the front and the back pieces, I did, before I we do this, uh oh, I got a thread nest right there, I didn't notice that. I did run a row of stay stitching at 3 8 7 inch from the edge. Um, around all the collar curves, both on the front and the back pieces. Don't know why this is like that, but you know, it's not going to show anyway. That'll be inside the, the facing. So, the first thing that I did is you need to make sure that where you sew your zipper on that that seam line is going to be at the same distance from the edge that your regular seam line is down here. And we're using a 5 8 inch seam allowance on this garment as standard. So that's what the seam allowance is going to be down here. So I needed to make sure that when I stick my zipper on, that the uh, area just before the coils, let me see if I can raise this up here, that where the coils is, if I put my seam line right there next to the coils at the bottom of this tape, that the other edge is at 5 8 give or take, okay? And so that's why I've staggered it so you can see about a quarter inch of fabric before the zipper tape starts, okay? That's how I decide how far in that's going to be. But before I put my tape on, I iron my zipper. I go ahead and unzip it and go to the ironing board with it all unzipped and push the coils out and iron it flat, okay? Or as flat as I can. And you don't have to do this, but if you don't iron out the coils on your invisible zipper, it makes it less invisible. It makes, when you sew it, those coils, or when you have stress there, those coils want to unroll themselves a little bit and you have a little bit of a gap where the zipper is seen. 
if you iron them first you can get your stitching a lot closer into that hidden groove and then it works more invisibly than otherwise so that's what I've done I have ironed it and hopefully you can see that row of stitching right there right at the base of my coils and I use my invisible zipper foot starting at the top and come all the way down and by using the tape to hold it in place it's a lot easier a lot less puckers so I'm at the point where I'm going to attach the other side so I'll see you show you how all of this works so what I'm going to put is the other side here now on my zipper my fabric is right side up I put my zipper right side down when I stick it on so I put my tapes on the right side of my zipper see the pulls over here okay and I pull my zipper pull all the way down to the bottom and sew down as far as you can get you know you can't get all the way but you can get right about there is where I have to stop because otherwise my little foot runs right into it so I'm going to flip this side upside down so they are right sides together okay it's going to make it easier to place this one on this side but what I need to do now is go ahead and pull the paper backing off of my tape and sometimes well just about all the times it's a lot easier to get it started with a little pin to hold the sticky part down Alrighty, got it started. So I'm just pulling the backing paper off here. And at the top of my zipper, there's a little stop right there. And I want to put that little stop below the mark that we drew for the 5 8 And I am also staggering it in the same amount over here, just kind of eyeballing it about a quarter inch in from the edge. So now that I got that started, I'm just going to keep placing it a little bit push it down on. like this all the way down Okay, so now I have it pushed down all the way and I can go over to my sewing machine and sew it on. Alrighty, so this is my invisible zipper foot. It's a metal one. They come in plastic, metal, whatever. This is what mine looks like. And I'm just going to pop it back on here to my high shank machine. Get that thread down below. So I got my thread down below. Now the uh, zipper that I need to sew on is over here. So my zipper foot has grooves on both sides which makes it really handy because um, depending on which side I'm working on I can use one groove or another. So I may be using this groove over on this side of my foot to place the coils of my invisible zipper through. Pack it up and just come all the way down. So you can see it's just going through that little slot right there. Now when you run into the little toggle, that's as far as you can go. So I'm just backing up a couple stitches and I'm going to pull it out and we'll test out the zipper to make sure it actually closes up right here. First time you zip it up, it's the hardest because it's recalibrating all those little coils back and everything. So get the side twisted back in. Okay. So then, pretend I'm going to iron this flat 
and it's just going to look like a seam right here once I have it ironed nice and flat. Okay, so that is the fun of an invisible zipper. Now the instructions are going to tell you to sew the bottom first, then put in the zipper. I put in my zipper first and then sew the bottom. Because if you do it the other way, sewing it first, then put in the zipper, there's a very easy chance of getting a pucker right here. And doing it this way, it's a little more of a headache right here, but no pucker. So let's go back to the table. So on my way back to the table, I stopped off at the ironing board and pressed this part really quickly just to get my red marks off up here and to kind of flatten that out. And I think that's a really pretty zipper, truly invisible. So I get down here to the bottom, truly not invisible. And I need to get these sides, flipping it, you know, right sides together here. You can lift the end of my zipper up out of the way and I can pull the little extra tape that I do not need on there right now to get in my way. I can just clip that off. So I have that little sticky part that was under here pulled away and now I can fold up the edges of my fabric and pin it together. I just got that little tail of the zipper kind of sticking up here out of my way. I'm going to put a pin over here fairly close to the bottom of it and then the rest of the way I can pin it together. So here's the thing at this point if something got joggled up here and now these two bottom edges don't match up exactly okay maybe I had a little more ease when I sewed one side of my zipper on than the other and that can happen very easily. Doing it this way, the extra or the adjustment is going to be made down here at the hem, okay, which is easy. That's just, you know, hemming. If you sew this first and then when you put in your zipper, one side gets eased a little more than the other, you'll have that same difference gap. But instead of being way down there at the bottom, it's going to be right here. So that's why I do it this way. So anyhow, matching up these sides, I'm going to go ahead and sew it, starting as close as I can up here. I usually can't get right there. I can usually get, you know, maybe about a quarter inch or so away from the stitching for my zipper, and that's close enough. I can start there and come down. So I'm going to go ahead and sew that at 5 eighths and then press the seam allowance open. Okay, so now I'm over here. I have sewed it. I am pressing it open and when I get up here next to the zipper, I'm just going to lift it up, you know, and iron it up as high as I can and come back down. Just give her a little press. So let's flip it over, see what it looks like on the right side. Looks pretty good. So if I go to unzip this now, it's going to come down to this point. Now, technically, there is probably, let's see if we can raise this up, a little bit of space there, okay? What I would do, and what I'm going to do, is just with the needle and thread, go underneath here, and this, this is the space between where the stitching of my uh, zipper and the stitching of my seam could not meet because, you know, physics. So I'm just going to come in with a needle and thread, put a few stitches all the way through there. It'll be done. This will be closed up really well and there will be no problems. Okay, so I've got my back piece here, right side up. I'm going to take my front piece with its seam down the middle and put it on top and match up and sew my shoulder seams. Sew them both at 5 8 of an inch and after I do that, press it open and I'll be right back. So this is what my shoulder seams look like now. They're sewed and pressed open. I'm going to throw this on my dress form real quick and we are going to do a little bit of work on the facings before we do the side seams. All right, so for the facings, I have one that's cut on the fold for the front and then two of these little guys for the back. And I need to fuse a piece of interfacing to both. And again, I'm going to use my super duper 
lightweight fusical interfacing because this fabric is heavy enough. I think it has all the thickness I need. What the interfacing is going to do is just basically hold all those threads together so they're not going to want to get tweaked or misshapen or anything like that. So let me go ahead and cut these out, iron them on just the same as always, and I'll be right back. So this is my front facing. These are my backs. I do have interfacing fused to it. And I'm going to sew my shoulder seams together, placing them up here. Sew them at 5 8 Press the seam allowances open. And then I'm going to come back and with my serger, I'm going to serge around this outside edge down here. Actually, before I serge around it, I am going to pink halfway through these seam allowances so it does not get too bulky up there on my shoulder this way. Um, it's more staggered when you get up there. So I just wanted to show you that. Okay, so let me unzip my back zipper enough that I can open all of this stuff up here. And now it's time to pin my facing on. So first thing I'm going to do is match up my shoulder seams here. This is very thick. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here. And then open this side up and put the edge of the facing up against the edge of the fabric in there. Stick a pin here. Same thing over here. And then from those key points, I can just go ahead and average everything else out. So I'll put like one in between here, one in the center, you know, just like that. And I believe I'm going to be sewing this at five, eight, seven inch. Now I'm not going down at this point. I'm just going to start here and at five eighths go all the way around the neck edge to right here. Okay, so I've got it all stitched on and now I'm going to need to make some clips so that I will be able to flip it. So let me see if Nope, these scissors are not strong enough. Uh, so I'm clipping two within about an eighth of an inch of my stitching line right now. Just because this stuff frays so much, I don't want to get too close. But at the same time, it's so thick that I need to clip it pretty often just so that it'll open up nicely. Okay, so that way this can open up like that. And I think that that's going to work. The next thing I'm going to be doing is we need to understitch this. So with once all of my um, layers are clipped, you know, I've got so much thickness here. I'm going to do a little extra clipping right now. I'm going to clip off some of this seam allowance here. So I have all this clipped. What I'm going to do now is come in here and the facing part that has the inner facing, I'm going to pink that at halfway. Probably would have been easier to do this before, but you know what? I'm doing it now. So um, just because it's, it was so thick that this is going to help it not have such a huge bulk right behind my neckline. So let me go ahead and finish pinking this, just this layer all the way around. All right, so now that I have that layer pinked, you know, somewhat unevenly, but that's okay. I can push my whole seam allowance towards my facing. And I'm going to run a row of understitching up here on the facing side. Right about here, okay? Just a row of straight stitching right about there, making sure that all of the seam allowances are pushed up underneath that side. In the instructions, they actually want you to do this step before you do the understitching. I'm not sure that it makes that much of a difference, but if you do this step after, like I do, when you fold it, you want to wrap it so that the understitched side is 
pulling all of this over with it like it wants to sit naturally now that it's understitched, okay? And what I'm going to do is come back in here and run a row of stitching in here. I'm not going to get right close to the zipper. I'm going to have it probably closer to the edge of the tape of the zipper. Just stitching right there on both of the outside sides. Now before I stitch it, because I've got a lot of thickness here, I'm actually going to trim out some of that seam allowance there just so I don't have so much to go over. Okay, I've got that stitched, but there is still too much bulk up here, so I'm going to clip out some more there and a little bit up in this top corner just to make that a little less bulky. So now I can flip it right side out here and where I understitched it, hopefully the top's going to want to fold over nicely. Now I am using a home deck fabric so it is a whole lot thicker than what they called for. I think that that's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead over to my ironing board and iron the corners of both sides of the tops of these zippers with everything turned right side out like this. All right, got it all pressed. I pressed the rest of my facing down while I was over there at the ironing board. And the last thing that they want you to do is run a row of stitching around here to hold the entire facing down. They say use one inch from the finished edge and it looks like that I'll give you a little safety factor of about three quarters of an inch, so that should be okay. So what I'm gonna do just to ensure my safety and everything is to actually draw that one inch seam allowance. Because I have a little magnetic um, seam guide I can pop onto my machine, but sometimes at one inch, you know, things can go a little bit wonky, so. This pin does erase very well when I iron it, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to go ahead and draw my little marks and then um, also pin my facing down very carefully so that it does not want to move while I'm working on it. And that's going to give me a good guide so I can, again, unzip my zipper and start stitching here at one inch and come all the way around finishing up over here. So I've just popped her back up on here on my dress form. Just the sides are just kind of pinned together here to get an idea of what she's going to look like. Flip that down. So here's that stitching that's going to hold that facing down underneath. I think that is just fine. And all the way down. Of course, the sides are open. So I did not adjust the length on this at all. I cut it out exactly as the pattern has, which is going to be fairly long on me. At first, I thought I wanted it that long, but I just held it up to me in front of the mirror. I think it's too long. So I'm going to go downstairs, take a break, have a cup of coffee and think about it. And I'll be up later to chop some off the bottom. Alrighty, so now I'm going to match up and sew together my side seams. Very basic, just matching them up all the way down here. There are some notches, but honestly I do not have the mark because it's just one big seam. Once I have it all pinned and sewed, I will be pressing these seam allowances open. Doing this on both sides of my dress. All right, so I've got my side seams pressed open and over here at the underarm curve, I've got some clips just so it's going to lay nicely. Now, the way that they want us to hem up the edge of the sleeves is turning it under one inch and then stitching it like we did around the edge of the collar. So it'll have a row of stitching like that exposed. With my ruler, I'm going to mark exactly where that one inch place is. So I know where to turn it under. That looks good. Right there, I have marked up that side at one inch, so I know where to turn it under. Do the same on the back of the sleeve here. Okay. So now I can just fold it 
and when it's at that exact one inch place I'm just going to stick a pin out here and they want you to make sure that you put your pins on the outside because they do want you to stitch this while looking at the outside when I fold it you know what I'm going to do here this is very thick I don't want all of that thickness if I fold it up at the one inch okay so I folded it the one inch I'm going to draw a line up here where the top of that edge is going to be then about half an inch or so down from there I'm going to cut in and trim out most of this seam allowance just to make it a little less bulky in there so now if I fold it back up to that one inch position it is not nearly as bulky right there so I can go ahead and put my pin back out here I'm going to pin it on both sides of that seam just to make sure everything stays where it's supposed to okay and just continue that all the way around for both of the sleeves hopefully that they have everything adjusted correctly at the bottom again I'm trimming off some of that bulk of the seam allowance so at the underarm I'm also folding it in at one inch to me it looks like I'm going to need to open up a few stitches down there because of the way that the uh, sleeve is shaped but I will hold off judgment until it's all done so let me go ahead and finish uh, folding it in and pinning it like that on both sides so what I want to show you is um, I have not pulled any stitches out here they did not tell me to I don't think um, but what I'm going to do is because this is shorter on the inside than out here I'm not going to open it but what I'm going to do is start stitching like right here this is the underarm so no one's going to be staring at your underarm but my stitching will be starting about half an inch up from that point right here and then go all the way around and end right about Come on, focus for me. And it'll be ending right about here. So that very bottom won't have stitching on it, but that's going to be okay for me. So once it's all pinned up, then on this side, I've sewn this one. And because I folded it under one inch, I'm sewing it at a three quarter inch seam allowance from here to here. Okay. And uh, so the bottom, like I was saying, it's not sewed all the way I have stitches coming to this point and stitches coming to this point but this is just kind of sitting there like that I think that's the way they wanted it you know it's fine on the inside but that way it's going to be shaped like this on the outside so we're just going to call that good if that really bothers you what you can do is pick open the stitches here you know in this little bit and then separate it and you can you know have a better opening that way this doesn't bother me I think it'll work so I'm going to go ahead and get this side sewed up just the same all right so with the sleeves done the last thing to do is the hem and I held it up to myself in this pen here is where I want my finish length to be which is seven and a half inches from the current end okay so if I want a inch and a half hem which I do on this that means cutting out this much which is six inches which is you know about standard because I usually have to take off about four inches on patterns to work with my size because I'm not as tall as their models and you can see that it's slightly longer I want this to hit me below below my knees but not too too long you know being a little yellow dress and everything I want it to be kind of a classic sheath dress type length so that's what I'm going for here so I'm just going to go ahead mark it all the way around at six inches um, cut that and serge the edge all right so here I have my nice curved edge I have surged it you know trimmed it off and surged it and because it is a curved edge and I'm going to need to work in some ease I am going to use stretch lace to hem this so I haven't done this in a little while where what I need to do is um, this 
hem lace has a bit of a stretch to it. You know, not a whole lot, but a little bit. So up here at the top, I'm going to stitch it on just with a straight stitch, you know, starting here so that about a quarter inch of the fabric is underneath. And as I sew it, I'm going to stretch it a little bit. Okay. And what that's going to do is work in, come on, it's going to work in some ease so that then when I go to fold it under, everything will fit nicely. So first thing first, I'm just going to go over to my sewing machine and stretch and sew and stretch and sew all the way around. Um, just using a regular stitch length too. You don't need to use anything super small or super wide. So I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I've got it sewed on. Just looks like that. Nothing fancy. And I got it laid here so you can see that without me even doing anything, it wants to curl itself up just because of the ease that I worked into that stretch lace. So that's really nice. So now, remember, I wanted an inch and a half hem. So from the top of this fabric here to the fold of the, <coughs> excuse me, to the fold of the hem, I want an inch and a half. And I'm going to go ahead and pin that at all of the seam allowances first and then I'll come back and pin it halfway and just let everything else work its way out. So I'll pin it at that seam allowance. Come back here. Make sure I've got my inch and a half here. And I'm pinning both sides of my seam allowance down. Okay, and then I'll come back halfway in between there and put a pin again, inch and a half. Okay, so if it, with just those points, then I can just kind of like push down, ease, and what I'll do is um, I will put a pin here, but before I stitch it, I'm going to iron it because that's going to give me a nice crease. It's going to kind of relax all this stuff. So when I go to stitch it, it will behave a lot better. Okay, so I have ironed it. I've not stitched it yet, obviously, but you can see how it's going to make it nice and flat. So what I'm going to do is with my machine, I'm just going to stitch it, you know, about an eighth of an inch in straight across here all the way around. If I did not have so much other top stitching on this dress, I would be doing this by hand. But since there's it here around the neck and around the sleeves, it's kind of in the character of it, so I don't see a problem. So I will go ahead and, and sew this down, just sewing the lace layer to the dress, and I'll be right back. <laughs> it very basic dress and um, the reason that I put my sweater on with it sorry my cat on the tripod um, is that because it's short sleeves it's easy to layer a jacket or a sweater or something and going into winter that helps me now the waist is slightly looser as you can see 
that was you know by design I did not want an hourglass type of fitted side without any darts because that can get a little bit awkward so leaving the sides slightly loose is good and um, the other thing is this is a very very plain design dress very very classic you know you can do a lot of things with it in layering and all kinds of things but very basic but that can come in really handy if you have a fabric that is outstanding in color and design or something or you want to highlight parts of it with embroidery or beading or something sometimes when you have a pattern that's very plain hang on a second <coughs> This is the troublemaker. Sometimes when you have a pattern that is very plain, you know, that doesn't have a lot of intersecting seams and everything, it's easier to put that kind of embellishment on. So I wanted to throw that out there. Anyhow, very, very easy. You know, the hardest part of this is the invisible zipper, but I hope the step-by-step -step, um, will make it so that that is not so daunting. So yeah, I like it. I think I'm gonna get some use out of it and I hope it's helpful. See you later, bye-bye. Live in my bucolic life, free of the city strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sew and spin, and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barge green pastures, beautiful in my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light pleases me, as it is plain to see. I'm living my bucolic life.